Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to explore the topic of base stiffness, which is a crucial aspect of modeling the interaction between soil and structures. We'll also dive into the different types of base connections and how foundation settlement can affect a structure's stability. So, let's start with Clause 5124 of BS 5950, Part 1. This clause outlines that if a column is rigidly connected to a suitable foundation, then the stiffness of the base should be assumed to be equal to that of the column. However, if the connection is nominal, then a base stiffness of 10% of the column's stiffness can be assumed. And in the case of an actual pin or rocker connection, the base stiffness is taken as zero. It's essential to understand that the base stiffness should be treated as a beam stiffness not a column stiffness. This means that to achieve the required base stiffness, a dummy beam needs to be connected to the base. The dummy beam should have the same length and inertia as the column, and its end should be fixed remotely from the column. This will help us model and analyze the interaction between the soil and the structure. To avoid any confusion caused by the moment at the end of the dummy member, the remote end of the dummy beam can be pinned as shown. The length of the dummy beam can also be reduced to 0.75 times the column length. This method is particularly useful when we don't have detailed knowledge of the foundation stiffness. Now that we have discussed the details of base stiffness and modeling for interaction between the soil and structure, let's move on to a broader discussion of steel portal frames and their base connections. Steel portal frames are popular in construction due to their versatility, strength, and cost-effectiveness. However, designing the base connection between the column and foundation can be a bit of a gray area, both in modeling and reality. Let's take a closer look at the different types of base connections. In both models, the inertia of the dummy member is equal to the column inertia in the case of a rigid base and the value of 10% of the column inertia in a nominally pinned base. For portal frames, the base stiffness can be modeled as 10% of the column stiffness for the ultimate limit state and 20% of the column stiffness for the serviceability limit state. If you decide to go with this approach, separate analyses will most likely be required for both limit states. Many programs allow base stiffness to be input directly as a spring stiffness, where a rigid base is input as shown and a nominally pinned base as shown. The column base connection to the foundation is another gray area, and it can be difficult to define the distinction between pinned and fixed bases in practical details. Portal frames are usually analyzed with pinned bases, as the cost of moment-resisting foundations often exceeds the savings in frame weight achieved by using fixed bases. However, it's uncommon to see details that are immediately recognized as pinned. Instead, details such as shown are frequently deemed to be pinned in analysis. These details are preferred for two reasons. First, the use of four holding down bolts allows the column to be erected without guying or propping and permits easier adjustment and plumbing. Second, a moment-resisting base may be required for stability during fire if the column is situated near a site boundary. The building regulations define when a building must incorporate this requirement. Refer to the behavior of steel portal frames in boundary conditions. It will be noted, however, that the bases shown could also be classed as moment-resisting. In the case of boundary columns, the base detail must be capable of resisting moment, although such bases are generally modeled as pinned for the frame analysis. Let's move on from our discussion about steel portal frames and their base connections and talk about other options for base support and how foundation settlement affects the structure. We talked about rotational base fixity. However, did you know that there are other base support options like vertical and horizontal support options of rigid, free, and a spring stiffness? If you're interested in learning more about these options, 
we recommend checking out Reference 16 for more detailed advice. When it comes to foundation settlement, isolated settlement can have a significant impact on the bending moments of the frame. Differential settlement is usually more damaging than overall settlement, although finding detailed advice on the matter can be difficult. Settlement of isolated foundations can have a dramatic effect on the bending moments of the frame. A typical bending moment diagram is shown as a result of the third foundation being vertically displaced by 30 mm relative to the remainder. In cases where you have knowledge of foundation details and soil properties, you can introduce spring supports to model the compressibility of the soil. You may also need to use horizontal releases to reflect reality. Keep in mind that any support other than the foundation will likely cause the structure to spread and one or more supports should be released to reflect this. Let's look at the example of a triangulated roof truss supported by two columns. If you're designing the truss in isolation, you need to model the supports with a horizontal release to avoid producing compression in some panels of the bottom boom. This would be incorrect in this situation. If a structure is analyzed with pinned bases, but the bases are semi-rigid, the bending moments produced by the analysis are generally conservative. It's recommended to analyze using pinned bases, even if the base details appear capable of resisting moment. Keep in mind that fixed bases should not be specified without considering the effect of fixity on foundation costs, which can become prohibitively expensive. Also note that the provisions of Clause 5124 preclude full fixity being assumed in the analysis. In fact, most nominally pinned bases can be used to advantage in reducing sway deflections. That's it for today's video on base stiffness, modeling the interaction between soil and structure, and base connections for steel portal frames. We discussed the importance of matching the stiffness of the base to the stiffness of the column and explored different types of base connections. We also talked about the impact of isolated foundation settlement on the frame's bending moments and looked at various options for base support. Remember that the choice of base connection can be a gray area in both modeling and reality, so it's important to carefully consider the options available. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel for more informative content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.